We're going to talk about stem and leaf plots. Now, to help you understand it, I have some data ready. Okay? So, it's deliberate that this is quite a big set of data. In fact, there are six rows and nine columns, so that makes six by nine, 54? 54 scores, I think. Hold on, I can check. 54. 54. Yeah, cool. So I can count. That's great. Right? Now, when you get these uh, visualizations, they're really useful when you have large amounts of data. If all you've got is, say, these five guys at the top, one, two, three, four, five, you don't need to draw a graph. For that you just look at the numbers, and it's easy to get in your head. But when you look at that, it's like, oh, it's a bit overwhelming. If I can visualize it, I can understand it better. Okay. So here's the first thing that we're all going to do. Let's get this data. Let's get it in some order. It's completely random at the moment. Okay. Um, you could put it just in like numerical order. You could sort it. Okay. But to help you do that a bit quicker, I want you to notice. What's the range of the data? Like, What's the lowest score you can see? And what's the highest score? Okay. I can hear 102 sounds like it's the smallest. Okay, and it looks pretty good. I don't see 101, I don't see 100, I don't see any two digits. And what's the biggest score? 198, 196. Looks like 196. 196, do we, do we have anything beating that? Looks pretty high. Okay, so being that, we have data from 102 all the way up to 196. Okay. What we could do is sort of group this. We could group this. We could have like all of the numbers from 100 to 109 here, right? We can group them. We can have all the numbers from 110 to 119. Group them all here, and I can go all the way down. I'm going to have a whole bunches of whole bunch of different sets. Okay. So that's what I'd like you to start by doing. I've got some categories for you. I'll finish this list off, but you can finish it off yourself too. Let's group these scores in these groups, and then we'll be able to see some patterns here. Okay. Look carefully, make sure you don't miss any, I'll leave that on the screen. Okay. Because there's a lot of data there, it takes a long time. You're starting to sense, man, this is not the most efficient way to do this, right? Surely there's gotta be a better way. Um, I do wanna get these in order, and you know, it would certainly be harder to try and put them in completely random order with no categories, but this is tiresome, and it takes a lot of space. I mean, if you notice what I'm doing, I'm going down the columns, right? And then I'm just filling them in. The reason I'm doing that, rather than looking for all of these ones and then all of these ones, is I don't want to miss any, right? So if I know I'm going down here, I'm not going to accidentally say, whoop, forgot a score. I'm just going to go through in a sorry, what's it, um, in a methodical way. So I'm not going to miss any. That makes sense? But have a look at this, right? Look at this line in here in particular, right? This is taking me forever, and it's wasting loads of space. I'm writing 140, 149, 149. I'm writing the one and the four over and over and over again. And every score in this category is gonna start with a one and a four, right? So, here's a better way to do this. Being that all of these scores have one and four in common, and all of these scores have one, three, one, two, one, one, etc. okay? Um, underneath where you started doing this, okay? I'm going to ask you to make another plot, but it's going to start off a little bit different. We can finish this one later, but this one's going to be much better. So, here's what we're going to do. I want you to, with your ruler if you've got one, if you don't have one, you get one later. We're going to rule a couple of lines to make what we call a stem and leaf plot. You'll see why it's called a stem and leaf plot in a minute. Okay? The couple of lines go like so. One down this way. Okay, so this stem and leaf plot is made of two parts, unsurprisingly, the stem and the leaf, okay? So we've got a stem over here, and what I'm going to get is a bunch of leaves over here, and I'll explain what those are in a second. Okay. So, remember, here are my categories, right? One, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, etc. These all start with one, zero. These all start with one, one, or start with one, two, etc. So the stem is how your numbers begin. So I'm gonna call this one, zero, one, 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 two, one, three. You get the idea. Okay? You with me so far? 
So here are going to be all the numbers that start with one zero. Now you notice I've already got some numbers here, okay, 200, 200, 205. So all I write is, and just note, I'm going to put these all the same distance apart. I'm going to write the two and then the five. I'm going to put them right next to each other. The two and the five, they symbolize 102. 105. Okay, yes, question. No, I'm going to put them right together. Okay, and you'll see it like this, right? Um, here, I'm going to have 110, 110, 111, right? I'm going to have a few more scores going this way. 123, 128, can't see, 8, 128, etc. What's this next one going to be here? It's just the 3, 133. I've got a whole bunch here. 0, 9, 0, 9 Okay, now here's what we're going to do. Two things. Number one, we're going to complete this all together. Secondly, I want you to note, right? See how I'm putting just the numbers, I'm just jamming them right together. Okay? That's because I know that each one of these is what I call a leaf. It's its own number. This is not like 388, for instance. Okay? I set up this so that I know that's 123, and 128, and another 128. Okay, so that's how I'm reading it. You'll notice I've evenly lined up my numbers, right? These numbers all line up, these numbers all line up, and you'll see why, once we finish this plot, that's really important. Okay, so you've got this set up, I'm going to finish it, and you can finish it as well. Let's create this stimulus plot. I'm almost done, I'm almost done. Let's say two things. Number one, this is not in order yet. Okay? Look, for example, here I have a whole bunch of numbers and they're completely jumbled up. Okay? So I could take this list of numbers, this is manageable, I could put that in order. And that would change the stem and leaf plot into an ordered stem and leaf plot. But here's the really, really cool thing that you can do with stem and leaf plots and why they're useful. Okay? And this is why, by the way, I have a piece of paper and I'm not just doing this on the whiteboard. You can do this in your books because you can move your book. I've got this plot and I'm going to take it and I'm going to move it. And when you move it, sorry, lost my boot and put it sideways, so all the stems are on the bottom, lo and behold, what have you made? You've made a dot plot, but it's got all the information on it, right? So this is like the best of both worlds. I've got the shape. I can see the clusters and the outliers and so on. I can see, okay, there's my mode, obviously. But if I want to, I can turn it back and I can actually see what the numerical values are. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. This is why these things are 